What's going on guys, your boy Amazing, we're back with another video, and in today's video guys, I'm going to be going over the Grand Cross Halloween World Quest, and explaining how to complete all the puzzles in the World Quest for you guys. Um, I know it came out, and not a lot of people even talked about it, but there actually is like a few puzzles you want to do, and uh, things you might not know when you're actually going through the World Quest in terms of how to actually clear it. So, let's hop in. And uh, I'm going to show you guys a video here of where we kind of go through uh, the world quest because I recorded it myself. And uh, I'm going to show you guys the uh, the answers to all the puzzles, basically. So um, here we go. So we have the uh, world quest right here. The first like bit of it, guys, is not really going to be anything you need to do that's special. Uh, but the cutscenes are pretty nice, though. I, I will say, like, this is one of the cutscenes. I'll let it rock. Um, but they're pretty cool, man. Um, I, I do like this world quest. They definitely are like being a little bit more innovative with uh, Grand Cross's world quest lately. Um, so that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, man, they are releasing uh, stuff like this. Like, look at look at the catastrophes. They need a catastrophes anime. <laughs> like, it actually uh, is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see here. So this first bit, like, you don't really do much. Um, only when you get to the, uh, I guess I can skip a little bit through, uh, when you get through a little bit, oh, right here, right here, right here, so let me go back. This is right here, so this is the first, uh, puzzle you need to do, this is the mysterious lock, so the answer straight up to this one is, uh, 1031, so initially I thought it was 1034, so I put that in initially, uh, but you guys will see when I put 1031, it actually does work, so we do, uh, one. Uh, zero three and then we I, I went all the way from the top. I don't know why I scrolled off from the top uh, But I did four and it didn't work um, But yeah, then I scrolled down to one and we got it. So that's the code right there uh, 10 or one zero three one is the code for the mysterious lock and then uh, from here you move on to the next area You know you do the little first device thing and Then we uh, we get to the next area. Um, I guess I could skip a little bit through here we go so this is the next one right here um and basically how the way the way this one works is that you're gonna have to uh open all of these statues or like ma make them glow in order you guys can see here at the top they have the little eye which is gonna be lilia they have the glasses which is gonna be valenti um they have the book which is gonna be easton the swords which is gonna be mono the uh i forgot what, what is this like a, a wrecking <laughs> like uh, i forgot what this is called uh but this will like a uh, big ass like little like iron ball is gonna be uh, Ma uh not mono uh roxy and then this is gonna be shin and then this is gonna be camilla so you have to do it in that order right you have to do it in that order so you guys will see in the video um you know i look at it for a bit i'm like kind of trying to get an idea i'm like okay uh, i guess i'll get an idea um but yeah and then we uh i guess i'll skip through to when i'm actually doing it oh back a little bit there you go so we unlock lilia all right um, and then we unlock the Valenti, which is gonna be the second one. What you guys can do, by the way, if you want, you can like pause my video on the on the thing itself, and then from there you can do it, right? Um, so yeah, so the next one was Easton, so I go straight over to Easton, um, and then I think the next one was um, yeah Mono, and then Roxy, and then Shin, and then Camilla. Yeah, so it, it's not too bad, you know, like just remembering the. Uh, the characters it, it, it's not it's not too bad uh, but if you just remember like what their what their weapons are basically is that's how you're gonna know um but yeah it's not too bad so you do this and then it's gonna activate uh and move you on to the next part of the quest and then uh i guess we could uh, skip a little bit through um this is this is the next part of the quest here where you actually go through like a little maze um and uh, uh, uh wait is it gonna play the cutscene? did i did i go past it Oh, here we go, here we go. I, I played past the cutscene. Okay, let, let, I'll show you guys the cutscene to give you guys an idea, because uh, Mono actually does test the waters here and uh, see where she can get. But you guys can see how it all glows on the map. Um, what you want to do is you want to follow the glowing parts on the map. You'll see uh, Mono is going through. And Valencia's like, oh my god, congrats. Uh, but then you'll see that when Mono actually does land on one that's not actually the right one, uh, it actually breaks and then she falls, so... Um, you don't want to actually do that. You want to make sure you stand on the ones that are correct. And so Valenti's like, okay, I got to do it myself now. Um, so yeah, so uh, that's going to be the little, uh, you know, the little uh, like tutorial there uh, with the uh, cutscene. Um, and then I, uh, <laughs> I did snipping tool because uh, I was trying to get uh, an idea of what it looks like. Um, so I didn't have to like run through it. But yeah, so we go through here. So you go, uh, go up to the, uh, 
the machine so press go now and then back up and go to this thing to actually see it and you can let this just re repeat for you guys so all you have to know is just you know follow that path right follow that path um so let's skip through a little bit uh all right, let me go back you guys can see i messed up the first time but this is the exact path you go so you go up and you go down you go around right uh and then follow that and then you're good right there you're gonna be perfectly okay so then you do that and that's gonna activate the next cutscene, which puts you into the main room with the clown and uh once you get to the clown uh you're gonna have to actually fight him so uh that's gonna be the next part of this uh world quest event which is pretty cool um, the only thing is with the clown fight, uh, it's a little bit uh, annoying for the first bit, I will say. Because um, the uh, <laughs> the way his fight goes, it's, uh, he has like a lot of gimmicks, uh, but we'll talk about it when we actually get to the fight. Um, but yeah, so he does his little thing here. And he spawns his little like uh, minion to help fight for him. He starts going crazy on the drums, okay? <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so he spawns his little like, uh, you know, big like clown guy. And then you're gonna have to fight him, beat him, and then you're actually done the world quest. So once you're done this fight, um, you're actually done the entire world quest. So that's good. Um, we're, we're basically done all the gimmicks now in terms of the uh, the puzzles. Now we're actually onto the fight part now. So this is where you fight uh, the clown uh, doll guy. And uh, something to take note, guys, about the clown doll guy, I would recommend if you are doing this, bring a character that has buff removal. That would probably be the most ideal because the boss uh, does have evade. Uh, which can be very annoying i just brought my farming team because i was just like oh i'll just you know i think our farming team would get the job done and it did but you know if you're like a newer player and you want to actually like choose the fight normally i'd say bring like uh you know bring single target damaging characters and bring one character like maybe like matrona or something someone who can buff or move so that's gonna be able to help you uh when you're actually damaging him uh but he does have damage cap uh so that's something else to take into account um, yeah, so this is going to be the fight right here. So I'll let the fight rock and I'll show you guys kind of what I did. Um, yeah. So Clown of Darkness, he only has 150k CC, which is not a lot. But the, the part that's like annoying is that you guys can see here, he does have the evade. Um, so you want to make sure you, uh, you know, you have to use a skill to break the evade. But if you use buff removal, it will, it will, it will remove the attack related and the evade. So, uh, yeah, so right here i basically just waste cards like i didn't really know what i was doing i'm not gonna lie i just kind of just you know uh attacked my way through but we just kind of waste cards here um let's skip a little bit in yeah so we start wasting cards so i found out that merlin's passive does work so if you do own fest merlin you could use her on this uh not ne really necessary though but uh yeah there we go and then yeah he does have damage cap remember so you can only do i think like 30 percent of his hp or 25 percent uh, I don't know the exact uh, damage cap details, but it's nothing too crazy. Um, and he can also attack seal you, so bringing characters that have like debuff skills will probably be better. Um, yeah, buff removal is going to be really nice too for the extort. So, uh, and maybe a cleanse unit actually. If you bring like Margaret, that could be good. Um, you'll see here his ultimate actually kind of does a good amount of damage. Considering my team is a farming team, uh, when you guys see his ultimate, his ultimate is kind of funny too. Uh, but when he does it, it actually does a good amount of damage, so... Uh, try and like watch out, you know, if he has ex has you extorted, like that's pretty good considering I'm 300k CC. If it was anyone that's like doing this at like 150k like on the dot with him, it is going to be a little bit more difficult. So, uh, you'll definitely have to watch out for that. Uh, but having King Ultimate is nice too because it cleanses your team and buff removes the boss. So, I guess King Ult really did help me throughout the fight. Uh, but you don't really necessarily need King. You just need someone that can, you know, buff or move and maybe cleanse for the team. And I think you'll be okay with that, right? I think, I think that'll definitely be fine. Um, but yeah, you guys can see there's the damage cap kicking in. So I think it is 25% uh, damage damage cap. Yeah, it literally is 25%. So another 25% and he's dead. Um, but yeah, not too bad of a fight though. You uh, just damage him and uh, he'll, he'll eventually die. Uh, but he does have that evade skill, which is going to be very annoying. Uh, once you get through that, you'll be okay, right? It's not too bad. Um, but yeah, I think that's basically it for the fight. Because then this turn, yeah, I just attack. And then he dies this turn. Because um, this uh, breaks the evade right here with uh, Echidna. And then we just actually finish him off with King. Uh, so yeah, it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, guys, that's the World Quest event right there. After you're done the fight with this guy, I think it just completes the World Quest. You do a little bit of talking, and then you uh, leave the uh, area here, and you're done the World Quest. And you need to complete the World Quest if you want to actually get the 
uh, tickets for Easton's banner. So if you guys are done the, if you if you guys are done like the rest of the missions, you need to do this uh, to be able to get the tickets for Easton. So you guys will see here, quest done, world quest complete, right? You get the achievement unlocked. So that's gonna be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe as always. If you guys want to see more videos like this, definitely let me know in the comment section below. And I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Peace out and have a great rest of your day.